Hi, uh, this is a small demo to show the features of Server Observability Dashboard. It provides the ability for developers, DevOps, and architects to observe the microservices deployed in a server mesh. It shows the runtime dependencies and metrics of cells and components and also provides the functionality to trace requests. For this demo, I am using the sample pet store application. I have deployed the sample and you can do so by following the instructions on our GitHub samples repo. Before we go to the application view, let me explain our PetStore scenario. PetStore is a web portal which can be used by the customers for ordering accessories for their pets. In this scenario, there are two cells. Pet front end cell and the pet back end cell. Front end cell, pet FV, has one component called portal, which is a web based app written in React.js. Back end cell, pet BE, has four components controller, catalog, customers, and orders. As you can see, pet FV is calling pet BE via its gateway and the controller component dispatch the request to other three components. I already sent some requests to PetStore application by signing in and creating two orders. Now let's see what we can observe with our Celtic Observability Dashboard. When logged in, you will see the landing page which provides the overview details of the system. It shows the cell dependencies and as you can see, there are two cells running, pet frontend and pet backend. By looking at the overall system, you are able to identify the cells which has errors and warnings if there is any. The right side panel provides the information about the HTTP traffic of the overall system and list cells uh, with links to distributed tracing. You can click on a specific cell and see its components and the HTTP traffic details. There had been 55 requests against the pet backend and all of them have succeeded. From the components list, you can go to the specific component overview page where you will see the dependencies of that component and the Kubernetes pods and metrics. In metrics view, you can see the inbound and outbound metrics. You can zoom into a specific time range and see the traces for that particular time range. You can click on a specific um, trace and go to see the detailed view to investigate more on specific requests. I will show that view later in this demo. In Kubernetes pods tab, you can see the pod listing and also see node and pod metrics. These details are shown in Grafana dashboard. This shows uh, details about CPU, memory, network, and file system usage. Now let's go to the cell listing. It shows a summary of metrics uh, and from there you can go to a specific cell and 
see the details such as the dependencies, its components and metrics. Similar to the component uh, metrics, it will show all the details. The dashboard shows the tracers for all requests which comes to the server system. You can filter out requests according to the according to the cell, component, and operation names. A request can be viewed in uh, three perspectives: the timeline view, sequence diagram view, and the dependency diagram view. Timeline view mainly focuses on the time that the request spent on a particular operation and hence it is easy to find out the most time com consuming component and operation. Also there is an option in the timeline view to filter out tracers according to types such as component and system. As you can see uh, the spans in a cell is grouped according to a cell color. The sequence diagram view illustrates the cells and component interactions. The landing view will show the cell-wise communications. You can click on a request and see the drill-down view of how components within the same cell um, interact with each other. Dependency diagram view shows the path of a request. It will show the errors and warnings if the particular, if in a particular request if there are any. The size of the component is proportional to the latency incurred by the component. So in the dashboard in the top toolbar it contains options to change cell colors as well as to share the dashboard within the given time range also you can see the historical data by selecting the date and time range you want uh, I hope you got an overall idea about the Celery dashboard and its features. Uh, thank you for watching.